Hey everyone, so I've mentioned in the past that some of my favorite games are the early Silent Hill games, particularly part two and part three. And I'm still amazed how back then they came up with really effective map systems that auto update based on where you've been and what you've done. I feel that this is vital functionality if you're trying to encourage exploration. People need to know where they've been and what they've done to know where they have yet to go. So in this one, I'm just going to focus on the indications that you've attempted to go through a door. Okay. So in Silent Hill, there were three potential outcomes. A, you're able to go through the door. B, you attempt to go through the door, but it's locked currently. So that means either you have to find uh, an object or maybe there is some other kind of trigger that will unlock the door. And three, the door will never, ever open. So even though it looks like a door, it's effectively a wall. So maybe it's just there for aesthetic person, uh, uh, purposes. Maybe there's no actual room behind it. So if you click on the first door, you'll see what I just said. It says that you can indeed pass through it. Now, obviously, if you're playing a game like Silent Hill, your character would actually walk through the door. You know, six one way, one half dozen the other. I'm using a mouse click. It's easy enough to, in that case, you'd use like a um, one of the buttons on the game controller to to op to um, operate the door. So if I click on this door, this is the second option that I mentioned that it is locked. So you currently can't go through it, but at some point you should be able to if you can find the key object. Again, it might be an actual object or it might be a switch somewhere. And then the third possibility is that you never, ever can go through that door. Maybe there is some something behind it, but maybe you have to go through a different way. Maybe you have to drop down from above or climb up from below, but you will not be going through that door. That it is effectively a wall. And yes, I know that in a, in a full game, the map would actually be covering the screen. I just wanted you to be able to see this in real time. All right, so how does this work? So two things. So first of all, you need your map images. This is just a 2D image drawn in whatever paint program you want. And then you have four more images. This is a blank image. This is vital. Um, well, it's all vital, but it's a blank image. And then you have three more images, obviously, with the different statuses that we just reviewed. It's important that these images are turned into Sprite 2D and UI. When you first uh, import a, an image into your asset folder, it will show up as default. So make sure you change it to Sprite and then click on Apply. Same thing for the map. So what we're actually going to do, we are going to have the map be one separate object, but then all these individual door icons, every single door is going to have all four of these images associated with it. And then depending on the status of the door that it's referring to, they will change to the corresponding image. So if we click on one of them, okay, you can actually see all three here. This is where those door objects are. And these are just UI objects. So just game object, UI, image. All four of these are just image UI objects. Okay, And so you're just positioning them on the map to be where the door would be. So you position them on the map. And then what you do is you, in this case, I use a script. And it is MapCon, which is attached to each one. So you can see MapCon here. We'll review it in a minute, but basically it's going to create these variables so that you can drag and drop each one of these on it. Because what you can do with an image object, okay, you can swap out which image is being used. And the default, so up here, source image is blank. Because if you notice, when we first started, you haven't checked any doors, so it shouldn't show any status. They're all blank. That's why you have to have the blank image. Okay, so before we review the script, I want to briefly mention the 3D environment. Now, you can use whatever you want. I happen to be using Cube Sci-Fi Interior Packs. Doesn't matter, you can use whatever you want. But what is vital is the door itself, the actual door that you're going to click on, the name of it must match the name of the corresponding map object. So when I clicked on this door here, that line activated. When I clicked on the second door, the second one activated. 
So the name of the map object has to match the name of the corresponding actual door object. And then the door object also has a script on it. In that case, it's the door con script. Okay, so I think I've mentioned the basics. Now we can look at the code. It's actually really simple. It's only like 12, maybe 14 lines of code, and it scales very, very well. So let's start with DoorCon because this is actually a very simple script. There's only four lines if you include the on mouse down. So DoorCon is unsurprisingly attached to the actual 3D door object. So you can see DoorCon. We're creating a variable, public string door status. So what this is going to do, this is going to hold a value which lets you know if the door is um, unlocked, which means when you click on it, you walk through it. Is it locked? And so you can't go through it. Um, or is it uh, blocked and that you will never ever be able to go through it? Because based on those values, we'll determine which image then shows up. So as you can see, by creating it public, by making a public script, you can just go right through your 3D environment and set what those values should be. Again, you can use whatever values you want. You just gotta make sure that the standardized that uh, if you have three statuses, you always use the same three words because that's what you're gonna be checking for. So um, again, so you need that public string to store that value. And then on mouse down, you're basically going to do two things. These two variables we haven't looked at yet because they get defined in the other script. But what you're doing is you're grabbing that value that we just said. We just said we're going to create a string to let us know what the status of the door is. That you can open it, that it's locked, or that it's permanently blocked, that's barricaded. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to take the name of the object that you clicked on and we're going to drop it into this other variable. Because what we're going to do is we're going to compare this to the uh, car, we're going to compare it to all of the um, map icons, these, and if you have a match, then a change might happen. Okay. So this is attached to the physical 3D doors. This is attached to the map icons. So again, here are the three variables that I just mentioned. They're sprites. And so you make them public. That way you can drag and drop them in the inspector. Here are those two variables that we just said. So we already reviewed what they're for. They need to be static or else they will not be accessible throughout the entire application. And then the update section, this is really what makes everything work. At least this is the glue that holds it all together. All those other steps need to be done too. What's really great about this is if you were to go, right now we have three doors. If you were to go to 50, 100, 500 doors, you would not have to add one line of code. It scales that well. And actually, I think this could be even slightly trimmer, but honestly, I'm happy with it is. Um, out of curiosity, if, you, if you're curious, I believe you could probably use a list. So rather than having three separate values, you could probably use a list and that would trim the code a little bit. But honestly, this scales really well. Okay, so what happens? So in the update section, this happens once every frame. What this says, and again, this is attached to our map door icons. If the game object, so if the name of the object the script is attached to, these, matches the name of the object that was just clicked on, and as we said, selected door is that object's name, so that's what you're doing. You're comparing the two names. You're comparing the name of the object that has been clicked on and you're comparing that to all the map icons if you get a match then one of three things could happen we look at the other variable now if the selected status is equal to unlock remember we said that we have the statuses here so if that is unlock then go ahead get a component image sprite and change it to stat opened stat opened and as we said, if we click on one of these, stat opened is this object here. So it all comes together. So if the selected status of the object that's been clicked on is equal to unlocked, 
then it gets set to stat open. If the value of the uh, selected status for the object that's been clicked on is equal to locked, then we switch the image to that object or to that uh, sprite, excuse me. Or if the selected status is blocked, then we change it to that one. So again, this script is attached to all the individual door objects and it's just looking for a match. You clicked on an object and now it's looking to see if there's a match with any of the door objects and then sets it accordingly. Okay, so I think that's about it. It's pretty simple functionality, which is why I find it so frustrating when modern games don't do this, although exploration has kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, there are, you know, sometimes there will be maps for, say, um, rogue likes and rogue lights, but I find that odd that they bother doing that because with roguelikes and roguelikes there's usually a randomized element that when you go back into the environment it's been randomized it's changed so the map has uh, only just so much usefulness in those kind of situations anyways so that's uh, that's where we are and i hope that this was useful if you have any questions please leave it in the comments if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing because only about five percent of the views on this channel come from people who are subscribed if there's anything else you want to see please leave a comment and i do hope that you enjoy the rest of your day